And now, here's a look at some of the highlights of Elmore Leonard receiving the 2008 F. Scott Fitzgerald Literary Award. Thanks a lot. Um, I was asked to come and I, and I wouldn't have passed this up. Um, I met Elmore Leonard about 10 years ago first, and uh, he, you know, along with Steve McQueen and Curtis Mayfield, he was one of my idols. Um, and I wasn't disappointed. That's, that's the main thing I want to get across. Every time I've met El, uh, Elmore, he's been a complete gentleman, not just to me, but to everybody around me. And, um, and, and that's really important. So you open any Elmore Leonard novel at random and uh, just pick a page, and you'll be struck by the beauty and rhythm of the clean prose, the funny natural dialogue, and the precise and economic descriptions that allow the narrative to breathe and flow. Before Elmore Leonard came along, dust had begun to settle on the genre of crime fiction. Frankly, it was on its deathbed, a victim of its own conventions and cliches. I'm talking about the private detective with the bottle of bourbon in his desk drawer, the cop on a holy mission to take down a killer. Elmore Leonard's characters were different. They lived in a gray world of imperfect morality. The protagonists, everyday men and women, were cool under pressure, but they felt the pressure. If his heroes found any victory at all, it was in small moments of inglorious redemption. His criminals were not misunderstood geniuses, psychological manipulators, or the serial killers that our culture has inexplicably elevated to folklore status. In fact, the bad guys were never as smart as they imagined themselves to be. I won't understate this, he changed the face of crime fiction, maybe all fiction. He broke the formula and invented something new. There's an artful social commentary to his books that says implicitly that novels can be thrilling and highly entertaining and also be about something. For aspiring writers like myself, coming of age in the years of punk rock and President Reagan, his books offered hope that we could perhaps contribute something different too. Elmore Leonard lit a fuse under a whole generation of novelists. He's done what few fiction writers have. He's taken us places that we ourselves cannot or will not go and convinced us completely that we're there. And this is why we read, but few authors actually deliver. Elmore Leonard always does in spades. We're here to present the 2008 F. Scott Fitzgerald Literary Award. Among the previous recipients, William Styron, Edward, Al Edward Albee, Norman Mailer, Joyce Carol Oates. Elmore Leonard belongs in the distinguished company of these writers. He is one of our finest novelists, and I can think of no one more deserving of this honor. Please welcome Elmore Leonard. And this one says, uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald Award is presented to Elmo Dutch Leonard for Outstanding Achievement in American Literature by the F. Scott Fitzgerald Literary Conference, October 25, 2008, Rockville, Maryland. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is the best award I've ever received, as you might imagine. Um, F. Scott Fitzgerald, I, I, uh, he and I, he, he wrote uh, The Great Gatsby the year I was born, and, but it was another 25 years before I read the book. And, uh, and in the 50s, I was, I was looking for writers, established writers, that I could imitate. So I, I didn't want to... I didn't think I could make up my own sound at that time. But if I took someone that I liked and get into his head the way he wrote, uh, then I, I, I felt that within time, my own sound would come out of that. And um, there was... <laughs> I had trouble reading his his work at, at that a, at the age of in my twenties, and uh, I didn't know exactly what what I wanted or, or, or uh, you know what, how to establish a sound. And uh, 
And I thought, well, he uses an awful lot of words. That was discouraging. And, and it's still discouraging when I read uh, certain people. I, I'm going to read you something that I wrote. And this is from Killshot, which I wrote in 1989. It's from the first chapter. <clears throat> the phone rang. He listened to several rings before picking up the receiver, wanting it to be a sign. He liked signs. The blackbird said yes, and a voice he recognized asked, would he like to go to Detroit, see a man at a hotel Friday morning? It would take him maybe two minutes. A shower was running in the bathroom. The blackbird brought the sheet up over the old man's body all the way to cover his face. Now he was looking at the outline of the face and saw the sheet move as the old man breathed in, sucking the white cloth flat against his mouth. That was where the blackbird placed the muzzle of the browning and shot it. He fired once. The sound filled the room, and maybe it was heard on the other side of the wall in another room, or maybe not. It was sudden. If anyone heard it and said, what was that, and stopped to listen, there was nothing else to hear, only the shower running in the bathroom. When he pulled the shower curtain aside, the girl with long blonde hair, the hair darker now, her face and body glistening wet, looked at him and said, are you through? The blackbird said, not yet raising the pistol and watch the girl's expression finally change. And that is that. Well, I'm, uh, I'm very happy to get, get this award and uh, uh, I'm very happy to be here. This has been a great show. Thank you. And that's just a quick sampling of the highlights from the entire conference. Montgomery College Television will also be airing the 2008 F. Scott Fitzgerald Literary Awards in their entirety. To find out when it airs, along with when the interview with Elmore Leonard will be replayed, please visit our website at montgomerycollege.edu and click on MCTV10 on the homepage.